Hit points in Dungeons and Dragons are very strange, mostly because no one seems to be able to agree on what they actually mean. In one school of thought, they represent combat experience, luck, and the ability to get out of the way when people are trying to poke you with pointy objects. You could think of them as hit protection more than hit points. This makes sense given the fact that they increase at every level and they recover relatively quickly, especially after a short rest in more recent editions. This school of thought envisions hit point loss as your character being slowly worn down over time, until they're no longer able to defend themselves and their enemies are able to deliver that one killing blow. But there is a number of problems with this perspective. First of all, no one seems to really use it. The idea of hit points being physical injury is a part of the way that people talk about the game. You take damage when you are hit. Monsters, in particular, always are described as being injured or wounded when players hit them. Secondly, there's definitely parts of the game where hit point loss is caused by actual physical injury. For example, drinking poison or falling into a pit of spikes. If hit point loss isn't supposed to be about physical damage, then how come hit points are being reduced when these types of events occur. The way that hit points seem to cover both combat experience and physical health can lead to these somewhat absurd situations. For example, in 5th edition, it's completely possible for a high-level character to strip off their clothes, jump into a pool of molten lava, swim around, get out on the other side, take a nap, and be totally fine. Now, if you're fine with this level of abstraction, and a lot of people are, then there's no problem. Keep playing the way that you're playing. However, if this sort of thing bothers you a little bit, there are some solutions, one of which is to divide your hit points into two different pools, called grit and flesh. Your pool of grit represents the first conceptualization of hit points, stamina, combat experience, and evasion. It gets whittled down during fights, recovers quickly, and you get more of it every time that you level. Your pool of flesh points, on the other hand, represents the amount of physical injury that you can actually sustain. It's typically a lot less than your grit pool, heals very slowly, and it doesn't increase much or at all when you level up. Within combat in this framework, any damage that you take affects your grit first, and then once all of that is gone, any excess is rolled over to affect your flesh points. If you're ever in a situation where the type of damage that you're taking is not the sort of thing that your grit would protect you from, like that pool of lava we mentioned before, then it bypasses grit entirely and goes straight to flesh. The goal of this concept is to increase verisimilitude without increasing complexity all that much. What is happening on your character sheet and in the rules is better reflecting what is happening in the game world itself. Also, having characters heal their flesh points at a very slow rate, like one flesh point per day, which is similar to how uh, hit points were healed back in AD&D, can really incentivize players to do more downtime projects while their characters are slowly healing. And that can lead to more investment and engagement and immersion in the campaign world. This general framework has been implemented in a couple different ways by different role-playing games. So here's a few examples that you can take ideas from if you're thinking of hacking the game this way yourself. In Electric Bastion Land, you get 1d6 grit per advancement. Your strength score, which is rolled with a 3d6, just like a normal D&D, works as your flesh score. Once you start taking flesh damage, you have to roll a save every time that this happens. And if you fail, your character just collapses on the spot. So this creates a situation where the longer you fight after your hit points run out, it becomes more and more likely that your character will pass out in the middle of the battle and your friends will have to rush and pull them to safety. Another example is Esoteric Enterprises. In that game, you have a standard hit die that you roll both for your flesh and for your grit points at character creation. So for example, a fighter type character would have 1d8 grit and 1d8 flesh when they start the game. However, at every subsequent level up, your grit increases by d8 as usual, while your flesh only increases by 1. One twist in that particular system is that you don't actually die upon reaching zero flesh. Instead, you start taking specific injuries that correspond to the amount of damage that you took on that attack. And this can lead to all sorts of scars and mutilations that your character will have to carry forward in their career. And if these injuries are bad enough, then you might straight up die. Objection time. Doesn't this make the game less lethal? Not necessarily. Some versions of these rules do end up giving you more points than you would have if you were just using hit points. However, there's also the other side of this in which very high level characters can still be taken out if their attackers find a way to bypass grit and go straight for flesh. Also, if you want the game to stay very lethal, you could use the system that was created by Logan Knight, who as far as I know was the person who popularized the whole grit flesh distinction within OSR D&D. In his system, the very first hit die that you rolled at level 1 was your flesh, and you received no grit at all. It was only on later advancements that you began gaining grit to protect your flesh. So this represented very beginning characters having not a whole lot of idea of what to do in combat, and then slowly gaining that experience as they leveled. I'll put a link to his blog post down below. 
But what about monsters? Are we supposed to track two separate pools of hit points for them too? I mean, you could, but I wouldn't. What I would do is just roll hit points for a monster as usual, and then treat all of those hit points as flesh points. So anytime a character does damage to a monster, they're doing physical damage to them. That's much more fun for the players, and it's easier for me to track too. Besides, the rate at which a monster heals is rarely relevant to the game. All right, that's it for today. Leave a comment below if you have ever hacked the game's hit point system yourself. What did you change and why? How did it turn out? I want to know. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.